to fight a guy like Manny Pacquiao, you got to be fast because he's super fast. If you're slow, that's another that is another formula for disaster. So of course you got to try to pick your levels up on your speed, just to kind of freak him out too. You know what I mean? Because Pacquiao has problems with speed also. We all have problems with speed. So when you're throwing fast stuff at Pacquiao, he has problems with that also. So um, that, that, that was definitely a point of emphasis that we had on this camp to make sure we're getting from A to B very quickly. And for sure more quickly than, than what we have in previous fights. And there's also that old um, adage that timing beats speed. And do you think, you know, especially Marquez seemed like he's a master at that. Did you study any of the four Marquez fights? Absolutely, absolutely. I've studied all of Pacquiao's fights, everything that he's had. Um, even fights that, you know, really weren't weren't too much geared toward this fight. But yeah, Marquez has one great element, and I think a big element to beat Manny Pacquiao was master counterpunching. Marquez was a master counterpuncher, and he was catching Pacquiao between Pacquiao's shots because Pacquiao does get his hands a bit out of position when he starts throwing punches. Because Pacquiao's a monster, he just wants to hit you hard. He doesn't care how he gets there, he just wants to hurt you. And uh, a, a, a master counterpuncher like Marquez was the perfect, um, uh, the perfect, the perfect nemesis for Manny Pacquiao. And uh, of course, we we we've taken some of those elements also. I think. Does Manny have a great ability to adjust in the middle of fight? You know, I hate to say this, but to me, that's one of his flaws. I don't think so. His ability, his ability to adjust is just going harder pushing harder, his will versus yours, breaking you down. Uh, that's not like a Mayweather that can actually change his style and adjust, you know, high fight IQ in the ring. Manny's just a beast, and if it ain't working, he's going to keep doing the same thing but going harder at it. And I think that's going to be a trap that's going to really cost him this fight also. You got a background in kickboxing, and the thing about kickboxing and like mixed martial arts is it looks a little bit different. Yes. Yeah, yeah. His, his footwork, not like an MMA guy. It's more like a kind of a kickboxer slash basketball player type footwork, like a point guard with all the little feints and, and stuff he does. He's a he's an off rhythm fighter, and his feet are like a like I said, like a slashing point guard trying to go to the hole and dish the rock for an assist or something. So. That's one of his benefits, though. That's what causes a lot of guys' problems. He's not really the conventional boxer. Plus, he's a southpaw. Plus, he has speed and power. And plus, he has a killer mentality. So those are hard elements to beat. That's why you got to be mentally strong. You got to be very sharp, you know, sniper sharp. And you got to be in shape and have confidence in what you do also. But that's also why he kind of brought you to the table that other trainers connect because you see those things. Yes, those yes. But you can't train from like a regular body. Yes, that's right, that's right. Because, you know, Pacquiao has power with weird angles on his punches. A street, he, has a, he throws a street fighter left hand. He throws a straight left hand. He's got a wide, loopy left uppercut that he knocks people down with. And I've watched the videos of like, how are these guys going down from that punch? Looks like a complete arm punch, but guys are going down. So he obviously has really heavy hands and, and and those big old calves must be doing something with those punches because he, he does hit hard and, and that's why our defense got to be very sharp and we got to be very accurate with our techniques. Speed, precision and distance are definitely uh, uh, points of emphasis in this fight. I'm not some new guy on the block, I'm just new to this type of exposure. Because everyone thinks I'm some kind of attention seeker, man. I'm already famous in what I do. I'm a martial artist first. Um, and that's all I care about. So this boxing thing, I just want my fighters to be successful and win. People are say saying bad things about me on the internet because I'm, I'm being extensive in my interviews. You know what I mean? I'm like, you guys are asking me the questions, but if I answer it, now I'm trying to seek more attention than my fighter, Jesse. I think that's ridiculous. I'm cool with not saying anything, but if people ask me a question, I want to make sure that I say it precise and I get my point across. You know, I could do a one a one liner. Yeah, we're good. We're going to win. We're OK. I could do that. But I really want people to understand where we're coming from. So. When we do these things that we claim we're going to do, there's no surprises. I don't want people to think this is luck. 
I'm here because I have a certain expertise. Jesse is here because he has a great expertise and he's a great fighter. We're not here to fight Manny Pacquiao because of luck. Jesse has dedicated 20 years of his life to this sport. Amateur, pros, uh, two different divisions. We deserve to be here. I didn't look out and get the job from Jesse. Jesse hired me. We, he auditioned me. He liked what the, the, the energy and the synergy between us, and, and, and we became a team, and we won a world title, our first fight together. And we're going to defend our world title against a legend, our second fight. These things aren't by luck. And, and the main thing, we're confident about our abilities, and we're for sure we're going to win this Saturday night. The Bradley-Pacquiao last fight, we seen Bradley basically give up in like the ninth round. Bad posture, he was throwing his arms up in the air, you know, by the way, Bradley's a great fighter, but if you, if you if you guys remember that fight, he kind of just gave up after he got knocked down. He was dying himself. He was pouting. He just didn't want to be there anymore. So Bradley's the highest level boxer, and he mentally broke and gave up. Rewind the Jesse Bradley fight. Most people thought Jesse wasn't doing well or whatever. They thought Bradley was winning, but Jesse still in that final round was trying to fight and figure out a way to, to seize the moment and get a victory. Should have had the victory. Um, the referee, you, you, you guys know the referee blew it, but that showed me something right there. This guy has an undying spirit. He has a strong heart, and with that, you can conquer anything, man. This fight could be going bad, but I know my fighter ain't gonna break the way Bradley did the last time. I know my fighter's gonna keep looking for a way. And one thing about Manny, he's not a, a, uh, a uh, safe fighter. Manny will give you opportunities because he wants that, that, that fantastic finish. So he's not going to go defensive mode, you know what I mean? So anytime you fight Manny Pacquiao, there's always a chance the way Marquez showed in the last fight. I thought Marquez was going to get stopped and he ended up shocking the world in that fight. Um, and so with Jesse, with the heart he has, the undying spirit, we already know no matter what happens in this fight that uh, Jesse will have what it takes to pull through and get that victory. Freddie just said that uh, Pacquiao is going to beat Jesse in the fourth or five rounds. What do you think about that? Freddie can feel any way he wants to. He has the right to feel any way he wants to. He's a legendary trainer, and he's been training a year more times than I could probably count. So Freddie can feel any way he wants to. I have no comment about how he feels. I can tell you how I feel if you're asking me that question. Um, it ain't happening. We're winning the goddamn fight. <laughs>